Hey guys, Iskamar here, and today I just wanted to go over my 2019 starting metrics. Now, I'm a little late to this as we're now on the 6th of February, and I recorded all of this, I think, at the end of the first week of January. And basically, I wanted to give myself a week in January to kind of recover a little bit from all the holidays and all the bad eating and just kind of go through like a little trial week of working out to kind of get to a better baseline. Because if I had done these starting metrics like at the beginning of the first week instead of the end, then I would have gotten like way worse numbers and that would have skewed like my actual progress over the, the span of the year because I wouldn't be starting with an accurate baseline. And I wouldn't say I actually got to a really accurate baseline, but I did get um, to a better point. And I did just try to adjust my glasses. That's, that's how you can tell when someone's really used to wearing glasses way too much. But anyways, so here we are. Why am I gathering my starting metrics and what is it? Um, what I'm going to do is I originally wanted to track like just my general lifting and like body progress. Two, I also wanted to track like brain, brain and thinking, mental processing, stuff like that. And then three, I wanted to track some like reaction time and, and hand-eye coordination type stuff. And I ultimately ended up scrapping the whole brain, like the mental processing testings, because I couldn't find like a test that was worth doing, that was worth paying money for, like right this second. So I'll have to do more research on that and we'll have to start tracking that later. Um, but anyways, why am I doing this? Y'all may not know, but I was born in 1990, and that means, you know, we're sitting here in 2019. That means a year and a little bit from now, your boy's going to be hitting 30. And something that I really, really enjoy to do is gaming at a, at a semi-somewhat competitive level. And that's something that, although I have a lot of other projects that are my main focus, like I still want to, on the side, I want to be able to maintain a high level of play for at least another, you know, five, six years maybe. I want to be able to keep my brain really sharp. And so what that means is in order to compete and keep myself on a level that can be comparable to someone who's a lot younger, um, I'm not going to be able to just rely on raw reaction time and, and reflexes and, and, and things like that. I'm going to have to be keeping my mind sharp. I'm going to have to be actually um, working on reaction time, hand-eye coordination. And I'm just going to have to overall care more about my health, which I really is something that I already um, see as important. So... This is, this is something that I'm going to be making like more videos on, like more in-depth videos on later on. But my, my goal, my focus going forward with, with life and myself is longevity now. Like I don't really care as much about like pushing for crazy aesthetics. I don't really care for mu uh, much about just like hitting a bunch of uh, strength and speed PRs and things like that. I'm I'm just gonna approach uh, my training from a standpoint of longevity and basically pushing my brain to its limits. So right now, um, I'm starting off really simple and. What these starting metrics are going to have is <clears throat> my general lifting, hand-eye coordination, reflex training, as well as aim training on the PC as well. So we'll start off with my general lifting. And I say lifting, but it's not really lifting. I'm not lifting any weights right now. Um, I'm going to start off just because I'm still in just more of a weight loss journey. Um, I have I, My goal is to hit this year, hit... Um, at least 10% body fat or below and be in the 190s to 180s. Right now, I'm sitting at about 212. Um, that's a whole nother thing. January, we're doing this in February. We're making this video in February and that should be a little telling. January wasn't the best month. Like I kind of continued the whole holiday frenzy throughout January and I didn't really train much at all so we're getting back on track here in February um, 
I'm my lowest point that I hit at the end of 2018 in December was 203. And after my little trial, like correction week um, at the beginning of January, I weighed myself in. I was 207. Right now, like I said, I'm around 212. I haven't really been on point. I've had some. I've had some weeks to where I just really just went crazy and did really bad. But we're, we're refocused and we're going forward and we're going to focus on consistency throughout the rest of the year. But anyways, so let's get to it. Let's look at general lifting. General lifting. So first thing that I have right here is pull-ups. And this is just like a really, really good lift, full, almost full body lift. It uses a lot of muscles and it's one of the things I'll just be measuring throughout the end of the year. Um, my first test right here is I'm really focusing on slow and controlled going up with some measure of control you can see I bring my knees up a little bit that's a little bit of a crutch so that's something I'm gonna try to eliminate but uh, on the eccentric portion of the lift you can see me lowering myself that's the eccentric portion um, there I'm trying to focus on coming down really slow and controlled so doing it that way my max was only seven pull-ups and that's not really great, but something that we're going to improve upon throughout the rest of the year. I think my goal is 30, I believe. Um, next, we have controlled push-ups. And I say controlled push-ups. My, my main thing here is I don't want to just be going really fast. You know, you see a lot of people um, just seeing how many push-ups they can do. They'll just be doing it really fast, just pumping up and down. And I wanted to do this with some measure of control. That means um, going down slow in the eccentric portion and trying to touch the test chest on the ground. After reviewing this, I didn't do so great in both areas. I was coming down a little too fast. And since I had my head facing downwards, I wasn't getting my chest to the ground on every portion of the lift. But anyways, more stuff to correct. Right there, we hit um, 38 push-ups, which isn't too bad, but definitely, definitely would like to see that higher. And the final thing. So this is something I'm going to really have to adjust. My first goal when I just sat down and was just drawing on paper, my first goal was to be able to do um, a pistol squat on each leg. Uh, which I don't know if you've ever tried before pistol squats they're pretty challenging especially if you're doing it with no like support and you're trying to um, go below parallel pistol squats are pretty difficult at different times of my life when I've hit like my really fastest speeds I was doing I could do I could do pistol squats really well um, right now my starting goal which Ever since I had major knee surgery back at the end of 2015, I have never gotten to the point to where I've uh, been able to do a pistol squat again. That's mainly because my weight is just ridiculous throughout these past three to four years. But um, my goal was just to do one pistol squat on air below parallel. However, I sat this bench down to a really, really low angle and I was able to do some pistol squats a lot easier than I thought with, with trying to use the bench for as minimal support as, as um, possible. So looks like I'm going to have to up my goal. I think I bumped it up to like three on air for each leg, but we'll see how that goes. We'll just keep measuring it. Uh, moving on, now we have the outside portion of like the hand-eye coordination and aiming and this is where I do things a little unconventional. Um, it's it's This is a really fun cardio drill for me. It's a fun way to get cardio in but it's also a great way to work on mental processing, um, reaction time, and like keeping composure under duress. So within this workout, I'm just throwing a tennis ball against a wall and this wall isn't, isn't flat. It's, it's uh, made out of stone. So um, it's made out of different shaped stones. So it's really chaotic. The ball will go all over the place. So that, that, that um, creates an environment of unpredictability, makes it really good for aim training and reaction time training and hand-eye coordination. Anyways, I also wanted to throw in a different element to it with my training is to have like different visual cues and verbal commands throughout the portion of the workout to like add a different layer and like a different thinking layer um, so that I can respond to visual cues, respond to audio cues. But 
and we're not we're not measuring that right now and so basically what we're doing right here is I'm just getting at a moderate range from the wall and I'm just doing rapid fire and I'm just trying to throw the ball pretty fast and catch it and just keep going like nonstop and the my average score for this was 41 caught and 12 missed so that's 77 percent of the balls caught and and I was just measuring this over a span of two minutes. I just did two minute sets and I just took the average of all my sets. And then the next portion of this is a slower version. And what I'm doing is I'm standing at about the same range. I'm closing my eyes and I throw the ball and the rule set is basically I can only, I can open my eyes once I hear the ball hit the wall. Obviously sometimes I'll open my eyes a little bit earlier, but this is more to, um, this is more to track re like raw reaction time and precision, whereas the other one's like rapid, so it's it's like it's consistent reaction time. It's your reaction time over time, and trying to keep up with like uh, a persistent pace. Whereas this is more just like raw one-off reaction time. And in case in case y'all didn't believe, I mean I mean come on guys, we just gotta go off trust here. You just gotta go off trust. You gotta trust that my eyes are closed. No, but in case y'all didn't believe that my eyes are closed, I I also filmed the frontal angle so that I could show that I was doing this drill and keeping my eyes closed until at least like what I thought I heard the ball, and and just to have some integrity for behind this drill and testing. But anyways, for this, we caught 13, missed, um, this is the average. We, on average, caught 13, missed 11.5, and so that's 53%. Now to round it out, uh, I did three different things with Aim Booster. Aim Booster is what I'm working with right now. Um, for the type of games that I like to play, for like MOBAs or like really like, I guess MMOs, like Lost Ark. My ideal game has a good amount of mechanical ability mixed in and mechanical skill sets. That's at least what I would like to play is like a good mix of cerebral and mechanical. Too bad there's not really a lot of games like that right now. For, for that type of skill set there really isn't a good training tool. Yeah aim booster is great for like raw aiming, for precision, for things like that, but I would like to see a, a training tool that incorporated, that, that could be used towards people that are really trying to get competitive into to, um, like MOBA gaming or high level uh, like high mechanical games like hero shooters and, and stuff like that so maybe that's something that I'll work on in the future but anyways so I just did three drills I had the precision drill which is like is is this one to where the 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 target just spawns really fast at a random spot and you got to try to click it as fast as possible um, here my prioritization is reaction time over accuracy so I just want to try to move to the target as fast as I possibly can and and that's the main focus and then accuracy is the second thing I'm tracking um, so what I really like about this is this is like reaction time within context it's not just like one of the ones to where you wait for the button to turn a color and you just click that's just like raw like reaction time but there's no context to it it's not reaction time plus something and this is reaction time plus aim so i like that so reaction time is the most important part for this for me and then and then accuracy comes second so my average reaction time with this is 320 329 ms and then the average accuracy is 34 percent then there's the double shot drill um, I like this one. It, it's it just to me if there's anything that could provide like any sort of like anything relevant towards gaming that I play, this one's pretty good for that. And my uh, per, my average here is 68% targets hit. And again, I'm just doing sets over a period of two minutes, and I'm just taking the average from the the different sets. And then the last thing is the aim challenge. Here, I just did three of them. And I'm not really interested, like, the, the reason I like this is the same reason I kind of like the wall ball, like, rapid fire, is it's just consistent um, actions. It's, this isn't actual, like, raw aim training and precision training. It's just consistent target tracking and keeping track of a bunch of different things um, at once. And so my average time here is 1 minute and 15 seconds. Um, average targets hit 208, 
and then average targets per second is 3.4. Especially on this one, I'm not interested in one-offs and like what my best PRs are. I'm more interested in getting a consistent like high score and like consistently um, being able to churn out um, high scores here. If we're just going off a of PR, my current personal record is one minute, 57 seconds, 89% uh, accuracy with 359 targets hit and 3.8 per second. And so I definitely want to be um, training this a little bit over the course of the year, maybe like two or three days a week um, doing some aim boost, doing some aim booster drills as well as everything else. And my goal is to see these numbers climb um, by the end of the year. I have my goals written down. I don't have that on hand. But yeah, so that's it. That's it for the starting metrics. Um, the main thing here is approaching 30. So I want to be training and I want to be eating better, more consistently in order to, to take care of my body and keep my brain health up so I can stay sharp for the rest of my life, obviously. But as far as like within the scope of competitive gaming, I, I think it's something that I'd like to do for like the next four to five years, maybe. Like I want to be able to play games at a high level. Um, even if it's not my main focus. I really love competing against people. It, it's something that I'm really, I've always been passionate about. And so I want to get the most out of the youth that I have left. And so this is my plan is to start, start tracking these metrics. We'll add in some other metrics later on, like whenever I find some good brain testing, but um, we're going to focus in on these and improving these over the course of the year. But but anyways, guys, if that interests you, then let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe I could uh, whip up like some of the parameters for this if, if some of y'all want to do something like this with me. But anyways, if you're new here and you want to follow me on this, this uh, health journey, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I will be pumping out more um, health-based content. It, and for those of y'all that already follow the channel, don't like get scared that I'm just going to be like focusing in on raw health. Most of the health videos I make will be put within like the perspective of gaming how it actually um, is relevant to gaming and so it'll be more from a gaming lens it's not going to just be straight up health uh, though i will do some one-offs like that but anyways guys thanks for watching and see you on the next one